U.S. officials have concluded Palestinian American journalist Shireen Abu Akleh was likely unintentionally shot by Israeli forces. In a statement from State Department spokesperson Ned Price, the finding comes after what the U.S. said were inconclusive tests by independent ballistics experts of the bullet fragments recovered from her body. The 51-year-old journalist for Al Jazeera was killed May 11th while covering an Israeli military raid in the West Bank despite wearing a bulletproof vest marked press. For more, I want to bring in CBS News correspondent Robert Berger from Jerusalem. Robert, thanks for being here. What more can you tell us about the U.S. determining that Abu Akleh was likely unintentionally shot by Israeli forces? Two notable words there, likely and unintentionally. Right. Uh, well, it took it, it took eight weeks for U.S. officials to even see this bullet. The Palestinians didn't want to turn it over. They didn't want the Israelis to be involved. So finally, it was handed over to the Americans, who determined that the bullet was so badly damaged that they couldn't inconclusively say who fired it. There was a big gun battle going on at the time between Israel and Palestinian militants in the West Bank. They did say it was likely fired by Israeli forces, and importantly, they added that there's no evidence that this shooting of the journalist was deliberate. Well, tell us more about the reaction there's been in the Middle East to this announcement. Obviously, we remember the outpouring of emotion after her death there uh, on the West Bank. Can you tell us more? Is there still a heightened sense of alert of emotion now? Well, you know, the Israelis were pleased that the, the finger of blame wasn't uh, pointed at them completely. They, they did not relate at all to the, fa the, the, the idea that they probably, that one of their soldiers probably fired the bullet. They didn't relate to that, but they did relate to the idea that the bullet was so badly damaged that the, the, the findings are inconclusive. They also said that Israel supports uh, freedom of the press and does not deliberately target journalists. Now, the Palestinians are extremely disappointed. They're calling this U.S. report a whitewash. They're saying that America is standing by its old ally Israel like it always does. And so they actually, the Palestinians now, talking about trying to get an international investigation into this incident. They say that she was deliberately targeted and killed by Israel. They're even talking about bringing the case to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Well, this announcement uh, comes less than two weeks before President Biden is scheduled to travel to Israel and the West Bank during a trip to the Middle East. I'm wondering how will this news impact the president's visit? You know, the American statement was, I think, very balanced, which is what the President Biden will try to be when he comes here, you know, with a nod to both the Israelis and the Palestinians. I don't think this is going to be a big issue on President Biden's visit. I mean, there, there are a lot of uh, more pressing issues. He will certainly express unwavering support for Israel's security and the friendship, uh, the, the special relationship between the two countries. He's also going to meet Palestinian leaders in the West Bank. And um, I expect he'll express support for Palestinian self-determination and the right to a state of their own. And the Palestinians, while they're disappointed with this American uh, report, they want to mend fences with the U.S. Um, they want to turn over a new page after difficult years under President Dr Trump, who was seen by the Palestinians as being extremely pro-Israel. All right. Robert Berger, thank you. Thank you.